Welcome back to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Washington. It was only a, about a week ago Helen Thomas retired, uh, I think obviously under pressure after some comments she made when a, what we're told is a rabbi uh, put a camera in front, of his, uh, in front of her face, asked her what she thought of Israel, and I think everybody by now has seen the comments. If you haven't, you, know, you can find them on our site. Uh, now joining us to discuss this affair is Ralph Nader. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Paul. So what's, what's your take on what happened? She should be reinstated. Uh, she's a courageous journal, journalist. She came h here in 1942, blazed the way for women like no one did. The first president of, of the Correspondents uh, Association, White, Cor White House Correspondents, uh, head of the Gridiron Dinner. Uh, she demanded that all these doors that were closed to females be opened up. Uh, and she was the, the, the courageous pioneer. She also set a standard for journalism, asking the tough questions on the minds of most Americans that the weak-kneed White House press corps would never ask, like to Bush, <clears throat> why, why did you invade Iraq? Uh, <clears throat> a million people have died, etc. Uh, she would ask questions that started with why, and that's almost a taboo in the White House press corps. You know, you ask softball questions, but you don't ask questions about violating international law, violating our constitution, violating our statutes, question dealing with torture, with uh, surveillance of Americans without a, a, a court review. And she also asked questions about the Israeli-Palestinian issue. Now she's sitting on a bench in the White House during Jewish Heritage Week. And uh, uh, a rabbi comes up uh, and he said, hi, Helen, what, what do you think about journalism? She says, that's a great profession, you can't lose, young people should go into it, everybody learns. He said, what do you think about Israel? He said, well, they should get out of Palestine. Uh, and uh, and uh, hardly a controversial statement. Uh, you know, I mean, the, the UN resolutions say that they should get out of the West Bank and Gaza, uh, 242. And okay, so but, but, and but. then, And then he asks her, well, what would they do? And as she said something, which I don't think she believes. She apologized uh, right away. Uh, she said something uh, that basically was an offhand comment, like a lot of people <clears throat> make an offhand comment. You know how many people <clears throat> we've all heard in the Washington press corps privately? She didn't do this part of her job. It was an offhand comment. Say bad things about Arabs? Anti-Semitism against Arabs is rife in politics today, not just talk radio. I mean, you got Savage, you got Hannity, you got Limbo. I mean, the things they say about Muslims and Muslim Americans, and, and how about Ann Coulter? She didn't lose a $30,000 speech. She didn't lose any gig. She didn't lose her column. And she said horrific things about going over there and slaughtering Muslims. So if they can't be converted to Christianity, she added that point. So, I mean, one mistake like that, which she apologized for, and they terminated her column, they terminated her career, they're going to replace her in the White House press corps. It's like a, a professional execution. And now the polls, I'm told, are highly in favor uh, of, of her coming back. Yeah, there was a Washington Post poll uh, yesterday yeah. which showed 88% of the people uh, were opposed to the, her removal from the yeah. White, House, White House press corps. Um, she, she asked something specific, and this is what people say yeah. is she, uh, some people have called her anti-Semitic and all yeah. of this, and that, that's the idea that where should they go, and she said they should go back to Germany, they should go back to Poland, they can go back to America. Now, yeah. most of the critique forgets that she said go back to America. And elsewhere. And, and elsewhere, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they don't talk about the fact that's that, right. that the, the Poland was not, was an anti-fascist population on the whole. Of course, there was anti-Semitism there. Yeah. But the Polish people fought the German invasion, and in, amongst those Polish people fighting yeah. were Jews alongside non-Jews. So that doesn't get talked about. But, but the whole, I mean, people know, a lot of people watching the real news know I wrote a piece about this, so, so they know where I'm coming from yeah. on this, but, which was called In Defense of Helen Thomas, if you didn't see it, so you can yeah. know where I, where I stood on it. But, but I, I think one of the points that's being missed here is that what she said, whether a lot of people disagree with it and think yeah. people are there and they're there and they have to sort it out, yeah. what she said's not so outrageous that, that, that there should have been an atmosphere of lynching here. It's, it, one could discuss that the same way one could discuss should Europeans get the hell out of North America. Yeah. So uh, the, talk a but bit about a, the atmosphere. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm sure she regrets the way she phrased it, but I think in back of her mind, she sees the, 
uh, the White House not condemning the kidnapping uh, of, uh, of the ship, the Turkish ship, not condemning nine dead, six uh, missing. She sees what's happening to the people of Gaza, open air prison, uh, anemia, serious anemia with 40% of the kids there, the blockade and the siege. I mean, she sees all these things going back to the naval ship, the Liberty, and the White House just rubber stamping the Israeli version of it, keeps selling uh, or giving weapons uh, uh, that are used against the Palestinians. She's of uh, Arab origin, for heaven's sake. I mean, just put the shoe on the other foot. Like, uh, the, uh, you have Jewish uh, American reporters where a, ma a massive Arab power is pummeling and slaughtering uh, and occupying the lands of the Jews. They would do a lot more than a casual comment sitting on a bench, uh, you know, at, at the White House. There's no proportionality here. The agenda is there are people in this town uh, like Ari Fleischer and Lanny Davis, who were the two ringleaders to, to, to try to get her out, they've been uh, waiting to get her out of there. She asked controversial questions about the, the Israeli the House, Palestine. The White House issue. press corps, it seems on the whole, yeah. turned on her very quickly and very easily. He, she shows them up. Even though they know her and they like her personally, she shows them up. When she says to President Obama, Do you know a country in the Middle East that has nuclear weapons? In the back of their mind, is saying, that's a pretty important question to ask, given Iran, given the non-proliferation treaty, which Israel does not belong to, so it doesn't have to be inspected uh, by the arm of the United Nations. Uh, and they're saying, you know, that is an important question. I'm afraid to ask it. That's what they're saying. Because the White House press corps is selected for people who want to get along by going along, who don't want to embarrass the president on behalf of the big media moguls. Because if you do, you'll never be asked, get, a, get to ask a question, that's which the, is what happens to Helen. She almost yeah, never gets to ask a that's question the, That's the daily restraint. But the big restraint is that these giant media companies do not want to alienate the White House. They got all kinds of fish to fry in the FCC and everything else. I once asked uh, Britt Hume, who was uh, on the Sunday talk shows, he was the host a few times for ABC. I said, why, why do you all ask such softball questions? to these senators, to these people from the White House. He said, don't you understand? He said, this is, the, this is the network's way of giving the politicians a platform because they don't want to alienate them and they want other things from the government. So they give them a platform to say their thing, Secretary of Defense, Cheney, you know, uh, Hillary Clinton, all these people. It was, it was quite an eye-opening admission by him uh, because nobody could be as dumb as the Washington press corps. Uh, asking those questions. I mean, 11-year-olds replacing the Washington Press Corps, uh, the, the, the White House Press Corps, would ask much tougher questions mm. uh, of, of uh, both presidents and press secretaries. So she shows them up in that way. You know, just, she asks direct questions. They're short questions. They go right to the core of the issue. Why are you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? And most of the reporters don't ask that. And if they do, they're out. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.